Have you ever wanted to play a gardening-themed horror game? You ever been playing Animal Crossing, Harvest Moon, Slime Rancher, Coral Island, Stardew Valley, etc., etc., and thought to yourself, hmm, this would be better if there was some sort of sinister being watching me just out of my peripheral vision and jump-scaring me randomly as I tend to my plants. No? You never thought that? Well, you should have. It's spooky season, and you know what that means. Horror games get released, but no, we're not talking about Silent Hill because I'm too poor. I spent all of my extra October budget money on these Halloween Ikea decorations. So instead, we're talking about an indie game called Grun. As the horror genre becomes increasingly saturated with entries, as more and more remakes of classic properties are made, as the genre becomes a parody of a satire of a parody, it becomes increasingly difficult to breathe new life into horror. Enter Grun. Had anybody thought of a horror gardening game? I certainly can't think of an example. But this game isn't just horror. Actually, it's, it's not even really mostly horror, if I'm being honest, but you know it's October, so we have to pretend, and the first Steam tag says so, so I'm not clickbaiting. Grun is unique. It's a journey into the surreal, the comfy, the mundane, the schizo, and yes, a cute little garden path leading you into the gaping maw of horror. Anyway, what I want to do is take a look at my first experience with the game, and then we'll discuss it in some more detail. I'm your host, the Doom Prophet. Happy Spooky Month! And without further ado, this is the horror gardening experience, Grun. A very normal gardening game about the Dutch countryside by Tom van den Bugart. Okay, so it's Saturday and we've just arrived somewhere by bus. He scrounged a little pocket change from the seats and talked to the bus driver. Turns out, we don't speak the language and can't make heads or tails of what he's saying. Then, we make our way into the delightful looking countryside. Idyllic gardens, beautiful plants, a nice river with a quaint little bridge and a church off in the distance. We find a Polaroid that will be the first of many. These Polaroids are this game's progression system, always pointing you forward. Who leaves them? What is at the end of this trail of crumbs? Solving our first little puzzle, we walk over the bridge, which immediately breaks, giving us our second puzzle to solve in the form of a new Polaroid. Every new Polaroid bounces and flashes, begging for our attention, pointing us ever forward. We find the shed, which is apparently our new humble abode, and also where we get our first explicit directions in this game. We're the new gardener, and our mission is to make the manor garden presentable by Monday. We are free to use all of the gardening tools, but the mansion is strictly off limits. We grab our shears, which we're going to be using a lot of, and get right to work cutting the grass, rustic style. Lawn mowers were never invented in Europe, you see. Immediately, I fall into a zen-like state. Trimming hedges and grass, picking up trash. Yes, this is what I've always done. This is what I always will do. Everything in its right place. I am at peace. Strangely, there seems to be a public restroom in a private garden. Nevertheless, this is our responsibility to clean. As I check the stalls, I miss the first sign something is amiss in this paradise. As we snip and shear, a counter in the bottom right corner assures us that we're making progress at a pleasant rate. But after encountering a magpie, we're given a Polaroid with a hint that may lead us out of the garden. After zoning out, I find I've cut all the grass, and I'm mysteriously rewarded with 2F, some type of currency. I break out of my trance and realize it's time to solve some of these Polaroids. We break a back wall to reveal a secret section, and an abandoned car provides us with a hammer. How are we going to use this, I wonder? We sneak into a room and find a key, and there's a second sign something is amiss.
What does this mysterious figure want? With our new key, we enter the churchyard area. The sun hurts my eyes here. Is there a sunburn mechanic in this game? Anyway, it would appear this is our responsibility as well, since a brand new percentage counter pops up. We begin tending carefully to this graveyard, and I find a new Polaroid beckoning us to come back at midnight. It's only at this point that I notice there's a time progression system. And indeed, it's already 5 o'clock. This day has flown by. Then, we find a doorknob in the grass. A doorknob to a red door in the church. What could be inside? The game suddenly grows more sinister. The interior of the church is a dark maze with that figure again. Bizarrely, this church passageway seems to exit from a door in the hedge, breaking the laws of geometry and physics and dumping us out in the wild, outside of the garden for the first time. In awe of my newfound freedom, I immediately wander into the cornfield. Having just watched Children of the Corn, I know no harm can befall me here. I wander into a gas station and I wonder just how big the world of this game is. Frightened at the scope, I wander back into the churchyard, only to be jump-scared by a spirit. Clearly, there's a sinister element here. Midnight falls, and the church beckons. I knock, and I'm lit in by... nothing at all. The game tells us we must sleep, so we return to the shack, and we're greeted with a nightmarish sound. Hellish, even. The game tells us we feel safe, but that's not true at all. The figure is outside of our window again. We check the scene of the peeping Tom and he's left us a gift. A severed hand to send a message. We're being hunted. And he's targeting gardeners. I explore the garden again and there's a small hut that leads to an impossibly large interior space. Was this here earlier? I didn't notice at all. The game sends us deeper down the rabbit hole. It's clear this isn't a normal gardening game at all. The fear for my life is stressing me out. I take it out on the stupid garden gnome, smashing him to bits. It laughs at me. This place isn't what it seems. I gotta get out of here, I'm not safe. I wander around, trying to escape my fate and encounter an angry dog. And that is the end of my tale. As it turns out, there's a lot of ways to die in this game, and you're supposed to die. A lot. When we've died, we're contacted by a mysterious angelic figure who informs us there's a great evil in the garden and it's up to us to stop it. So, he sends us back. So yeah, that was my first experience with Grun, and now you understand what these were for. In a bizarre little inversion of the classic spooky game Clock Tower, we, the protagonists, have the garden shears instead of this creepy little man. Hi, how are but you? they're not going to do us any good because we're being hunted. And we'll find we're not just getting hunted by that one tall guy either. There's multiple evil forces at play here. But let's not spoil too much yet, because now I want to talk about the specifics of the game. So, as you've probably observed by now, although this game is a horror game, the presentation is really anything but. Your standard rusty, foggy, and dark environments common to the genre classics just aren't present here. The game is bright, colorful, and charming, honestly. The people, including the villains, are these goofy Muppets that make hilarious noises. The entire world has a smooth, flat shading, and all of the models are geometrically simple. Visually, it reminds me of most of stuff like Katamari Damacy and Nobi Nobi Boy, which both seek to capture a whimsical, carefree attitude in their visuals. However, what those games don't have is the flip of a switch contrast that Grun does so well. Sure, the overworld is cutesy and charming, but then you enter a geometrically impossible space with dark, brooding lighting. And the intense difference of these environments immediately produces a foreboding feeling. Now, this isn't the only, or the first game to do that switch from cutesy to serious, but Grun captures the spirit of this trick well with its visuals. Alright, now hold still. Let me get this shot. Alright, handsome. Well, now I want to talk about the gameplay. At first, Grun presents itself as a gardening game. And indeed, my first playthrough, I was going full zen. Empty mind. My singular purpose to cut grass. But, after your first death, you'll realize Grun is actually a Polaroid hunting simulator. 
These tasty little snapshots into the future lead you on a breadcrumb trail, deeper and deeper into the proverbial rabbit hole. Each new Polaroid you discover pulls you further into the mystery. This game is paced incredibly well. Each new run, you're going to find something new, a new item, a new Polaroid, a new mystery, a new shortcut, or a new perspective. There are many tools for you to find in Gruen to aid in your goal of achieving the perfect garden. And there are many areas you'll discover as well. But each run through, you'll die in a new way or find a new secret or find a new ending, slowly adding to your knowledge of the game. Simply by playing the game, you'll eventually master the ins and outs. The game will demand this of you. In fact, it will make you a speedrunner as you find new shortcuts, but you'll want to. Each time you make a new discovery, endorphins will be released. You'll say, ah, I no longer have to pay the lady at the gas station for the ladder because I've discovered it's buried by the gazebo. And I can get the trowel from the dead gardener in the underwater cave first thing in the run because I've discovered the shortcut in the hedge. As you play more and more, the excellent pacing will suck you in and the game will undergo its next metamorphosis. Its first stage in the life cycle, a gardening game. Its pupil stage, the schizo detective Polaroid hunting mystery simulator. And then its final life cycle, the beautiful butterfly stage where you realize this game is actually a Groundhog Day simulator. Now, for those Gen Z and Gen Alpha amongst you that don't know about the classic 1993 Bill Murray film, Groundhog Day, it's a movie about a grouch of a man that has to live the same day over and over again for thousands of years until he ultimately learns to improve himself and learns every last detail about the town and is able to live the perfect day. Grun eventually becomes this. Over the course of hundreds of runs, you will perfect every last detail of your knowledge, learning all the ins and outs of the game. You want to find every secret, every ending. In fact, this game taught me to be so thorough, I was actually able to get the good ending before I even got the normal ending. But there's something I want. Something I need. I want the run. I want the run. The run to end all runs. The perfect under 10 minute good ending. Okay, so if you want to remain spoiler free, just skip this bit and come back after you buy it. And I really, really think you should buy and play this game. So please, go get it, then come back and watch this. But I had so much fun doing this run that I had to include it in the video. Here's my best shot. Saturday, we begin. We won't need the other days. First, we pick up the bus coin. In fact, we'll need every coin I pick up for the exact amount to trade to the creepy shop girl. I've broken this bridge hundreds of times. Grab the shears and the key, trim a few bushes on the way. This guy doesn't scare him anymore. Grab the hammer and instantly use the shortcut to get the travel. Do a little pump fake here to prevent the door from slamming shut two times. Next mission, get the lighter from underground and grab coin number two. Off into the corn to grab the TP. Very important. Grab this coin under the cone, then use the shortcut to grab the doorknob, which normally requires 20% of the church to be done to spawn. Crush this gnome, grab another coin, then get to work trimming the hedges. This is the easiest of the tasks in my opinion, and we need a bit of quick cash. Into the bathroom to give this distressed denizen TP, grab the mysterious blue coin, then finish the hedges. Putting the coin in the well causes rain to fall because I'm a goddamn weather wizard now. This instantly waters all the plants, giving us access to the flower room where I pick up the flower gem. The gnomes don't like that, but I don't like the gnomes. Now we're off to the mysterious red door entrance of the church. Pick up the magic flute and the snail's coin. Off to the gas station again, which activates the gnomes. Repair the bridge on the way and use the magic flute to grab the first of the idols. Aggroing the gnomes has caused the gnome door to spawn, where we grab our second idol. Use the shortcut into the park, where we grab the blessed sword. Along the way, we cut a few stalks of grass to get this door to spawn. Light the candles, open the door to the creepy trader girl. We buy the office key, strange disc, and compass back to the gas station. I cut the grass on the way. The game tells me it's not necessary, but I don't do it for that. I do it because I want to. Then we use the gas station computer to teleport into the mansion, grab the bone, which lets us de-aggro the dog, grab the church key, and we're off again. I don't even give the dog the bone because I'm still salty about my first playthrough, but it doesn't matter. Just having it in our inventory is enough. I cut the grass for the love of the game alone. Ride the magic bike into the twilight zone, set this on fire, grab the purified stone, descend into the belly of the fairy. 
Get the short idol from this idiot kid. Listen to Randy Newman's short people on the way out. Short people got no reason to live. Now, we enter the maze with compass in hand. Following the left-hand rule, we're in no danger here. We find a tall man, no longer a threat to us, and chop him into a Funko Pop. Our final job is simply to wait until midnight so the church door opens. Get jump scared one last time, then place the flower gem spawning the secret entrance. The run is essentially over now. Place all four idols. Meet the Dark Congregation. Exit into Hellworld. Spawn the demon and then chop him down to size. Skip this idiot's dialogue and then bask in the glory. 9 minutes and 24 seconds. Well, that was Grun, the horror gardening game. Now, of course, immediately after this, I went and looked up and there are much better runs. But hey, that was my organic best shot. And if you couldn't tell by now, I love this game. Actually, I think it's basically perfect. The pacing is incredible. The presentation is incredible. I love how the game plays with space. You'll enter a room and it seems like you took a space from somewhere far away and then somehow tied it to that door. The world is really clever, the gameplay is super tight. Indie games really just are restoring my faith in gaming. Thank you, Tom Van den Bugart. Was the game super scary? Not really. But hey, there are a few jump scares and some creepy moments, which is enough to justify making this video in October. And it's just such a delightful experience, I cannot recommend it enough. The only deduction of points I will make is for this. It's a game where cutting grass is a major mechanic, and there appears to be a scythe in the game, the go-to tool for cutting grass, but there doesn't seem to be any way to equip it. So sad. Well, that's about all I've got for today. I've been your host, The Doom Prophet. Thanks for watching up to this point if you have. And if you'd like to support this work and future videos, you can by watching another video. Seriously, that's all I ask. So YouTube likes it when you watch videos all the way to the end and then click another video. So if you want to help me out, go for it. I'll see you in the next Spooky Month vid soon. And remember, the end is nigh. So take it easy. And if it's easy, take it twice.